The fact that we have all of these great programming libraries and frameworks is awesome. There would be so many amazing projects out there that simply would not exist if every time you wanted to write any programming project, you had to write it from the ground up. Sure, you could go and write your own cross-platform audio library, your own 3D graphics library, even your own web framework, but at the end of the day, you don't really need to do so, and you're much better off letting the people who actually specialize in that one thing working on that project. Because even if you think you're an amazing developer, if someone spends a couple of years working on, like, I don't know, a 3D graphics library, it's going to be better than whatever you put together at the start of your project. So this allows you to worry about the features and constraints of your project, rather than worrying about all of that groundwork stuff just to make your project actually possible. But not all programming libraries are like this, and today I want to talk about one case which really indicates the problem with having an over-dependence on libraries. Today we're going to talk about the case of Leftpad, a JavaScript library that existed back in the days where JavaScript was an absolute mess of a language to work with. If you think that modern JavaScript is a bad language, because like, ho ho, if we take an object and we take an array and we plus them together, wow, it creates like a dumb result. You have no idea how bad JavaScript used to be. This is from a time we had to worry about browser compatibility. This is from a time where there wasn't even a way to pad the start of a string with a function. And that is exactly what leftpad actually did. Leftpad lets you add spaces to the start of a string. That might sound ridiculous to be a library. If you compress it down, getting rid of the comments, the extra spaces, you can get this down to 11 lines long while keeping it perfectly readable. Why was that a library? I don't know, but at the time it definitely was, and at the time most of NPM was either directly or transitively dependent on this package. So what do you think happened when this package got removed from NPM? Well back in 2016 we found out because packages like Node, Babel, and thousands of others completely broke because at some point along their dependency chain they required leftpad. And at the time, nobody even really knew that leftpad existed. It only had 10 stars on GitHub, but it still was such an important package. Now, I know someone's going to make the argument about like, oh, if you include this in every package that needs it, it's going to be a lot of repeated code and don't reinvent the wheel. And maybe you don't understand the logic. So if you don't understand the logic, you shouldn't be just like dumping the code into your project. And there is absolutely a time and place for this. Sure, copying this code into your repo would have led to some extra repeated code. And at the scale that leftpad was actually needed, it would have been a ton of extra repeated code. But there's really no way to properly avoid this without relying on a package that really didn't need to exist. But when it comes to reinventing the wheel, I don't really think that actually matters. That argument would make sense if you're re-implementing, say, like, a linked list or an array or like a stack or any of these like basic data structures that have well-established definitions for them already. There's no point redesigning that just for the sake of redesigning it. But in the case of leftpad, if you needed leftpad, you could have just stuck it in your code base without modifying it altogether. But this whole problem was caused by developers who were just too lazy to copy 11 lines of code into their code base. If they had done that, the problem literally never would have existed. And this problem is really, really excessive inside of NPM, inside of like JavaScript package management in general. Because these micro packages seem to be really highly encouraged. Even fairly simple libraries on NPM have hundreds of dependencies. It doesn't really make any sense how that manages to happen. The only way it does is because of all of these very, very tiny packages that do like one or two little things. This is a problem that plagues every language out there. It's just that JavaScript is probably the worst for it. Even in something like Python though, it is going to be a problem. And the solution isn't going to be just take every single one of your dependencies and just stick it into your repo. Vendoring code absolutely isn't the solution, but there is kind of a decent enough metric to work out whether this dependency actually makes any sense. If it takes you longer to find the package to actually fix the problem than just writing the solution, so like if it takes you more than like two minutes to do, maybe you should just write the solution. So older versions of JavaScript, once again talking about the mess that JavaScript used to be, 
didn't actually have a way to check if an array was actually an array. This is literally three lines of code. This is not something you ever needed a library for, but this package is available inside of NPM. Now you don't need it because there is a built-in way to do so, but you didn't need it at the time. If this is how you check if something is an array, then just put this code in your code base. There's no problem with making a bit of code like this or a project like Leftpad public. If you want to have a snippet online stored in a Git repo, that's perfectly fine. But if you're the developer of this project, maybe think twice about whether you actually want to put it inside of a package manager. Is it going to be safe to have projects actually depending on something that is this tiny? Does it make sense to have something like this actually being a package? My answer is going to be no. Moving away from the absolute mess that is these packages, I want to talk a bit about security. So there's sort of two sides of this argument here. If you're using a package that is very security dependent, let's say it's some sort of encryption library, it makes sense to use a library in that case because you're probably not a specialized developer working on that task. You probably don't know exactly the problems that may exist, how to properly test them. So it makes more sense in that case to let the people who know what they're doing actually work on it. But then there is the problem of the dependency tree. So are you vetting every single dependency coming into your project? Let's say you have, I don't know, four direct dependencies, but those dependencies explode out into, let's say, a hundred transitive dependencies. Are you making sure that each of those dependencies are actually safe, that none of them have been taken over and had malicious code actually injected into them? Well, not doing this caused a pretty big problem for BitPay back in 2018. So they were using a library known as EventStream, and someone gained legitimate access to the repo. They were perfectly allowed to commit to it, and they used that privilege to go and inject some code to steal some Bitcoin. And it wasn't just BitPay using this. This was a fairly popular library, and none of the repos making use of this dependency had any idea this was happening until these articles started to come out because none of them were actually checking their dependencies to make sure they were actually safe. So they updated from the safe version to the unsafe version, basically being none the wiser. And then there are countless cases of Bitcoin miners being on NPM, being embedded into some actual useful dependency and people just downloading that dependency, not going and verifying that it's actually safe and just sending these Bitcoin miners out into the world. The problem with vetting all your dependencies, though, is it's very costly, it's very time-consuming. If you have a deadline you have to hit, you might miss the deadline. It's just an absolute mess that, as time goes on and on, I feel like it's going to get worse and worse and worse. I don't see these micro-packages ever going away. I expect this to be the direction the industry continues to head. Where I can, I try to avoid this problem in my own projects. Obviously, there are cases where you can't just go and take the code and then just dump it into your repo because of incompatible licenses. That's where you're going to need to go and rewrite the code. But if it's something that's like one or two lines, it's very questionable whether a license even applies to something that short. Like if someone writes a single line of code, like, sure, you can say that's the license for it, but like if I do like a print hello world, you can't exactly say that's like a GPL bit of code. I genuinely don't know what the solution to this is. I expect it to keep getting worse. <sighs> Try to avoid it where you can, I guess, but you're going to download like a web framework or something and it's going to have hundreds of dependencies that are an absolute mess. So like... I don't, I don't really know what to say. The web is a mess and it's not going to get any better. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. So if you like this video and you want to go support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Libera page, subscribe star. All of that stuff is linked down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea available on YouTube and Odyssey as a video version and the audio version is available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week and upload about five or so YouTube shorts. The shorts go up on YouTube, obviously being YouTube shorts, and I live stream on YouTube, Twitch, and DLive. And I also have this channel available over on Odyssey. So that's going to be it for me and I'm out.